In this video, we'll take a look at solving linear systems using matrices. And if you flip over to the, uh, well, this is the first real page of the note. Uh, when solving a system of equations, it's possible to perform all the same operations as the algebraic method, uh, and some people call it elimination, some people call it addition, subtraction. And what it looks like, uh, those two methods, is algebraically, let's say I had the first two uh, equations here and I wanted to eliminate x. Uh, I could multiply this one by 3 to make it a 6x, and this one by 2 to make it a 6x, and subtract them, and I would eliminate the x. So that's the algebraic method of elimination. Addition subtraction is a, just a different name for the same thing, because you're adding or subtracting, and that's why it's called that. Now, what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you a method called, uh, well, you're using matrices, and a matrix is just a rectangular arrangement of numbers. And the numbers normally have some meaning. For example, the, the top row here, 2, 1, negative 1, 1, are the coefficients of this uh, linear equation, 2x plus 1y plus or sorry, minus z equals 1. And we normally write this in uh, the same order, uh, x, y, z, or a, b, c, whatever your variables are, and have the constant on the right side the equal sign. So the 1, 13, 0 are these 1, 13, 0. This vertical line here represents where the equal sign is in the, each equation. And so the 3, 4, 2 is the coefficients of x, y, and z there, and then the 1, negative 5, negative 2 in the bottom here, e and a 0 on the right side. So that's the, is what's called the augmented matrix for this system of linear equations. Now you could extend this to do uh, more than three equations and three unknowns. You could go to four equations and four unknowns or larger. You could even go down to two equations and two unknowns. Uh, that's, that's still, it still works with this matrix method. Now, before we get into a couple of examples, I'm going to explain what are called these elementary row operations. And basically what you're doing in, is uh, you're taking the system of linear equations and you're using these row operations to change it into a different system but with the same solution. And so uh, these are the three row operations we're going to use. You can multiply the numbers in any row by a non-zero constant. And it, uh, this also uh, includes dividing everything by a non-zero constant. And that's equivalent to, let's say, the entire equation was divisible by 2, for example. If you divide everything by 2, it's still the same line or plane. You can replace any row by adding the numbers in any row to the numbers in another row. And that's, if we go back here, that's equivalent to like multiplying this whole equation by 3 and this whole equation by 2, and then subtracting them or adding them if they happen to be opposites. You can also replace any row by subtracting uh, the numbers from one row and another row. Okay? And so these second two row operations are very similar. One just says adding and one says subtracting. So on to a couple of examples. We'll do two of these and then talk about another um, a certain what it looks like in a matrix and what it means um, in, on the last page. So we're asked to solve this system. So we take the uh, coefficients and put them in a matrix, and this is the um, augmented matrix here. And now the whole idea here, and I'll explain why near the end here, is we're going to use those row operations to change these three numbers, the 3, 1, negative 5, where they are, into zeros. And there's a reason for that, and I'll get to that as we get closer to the end here. Now, uh, if we were doing addition, subtraction, or elimination, we could again multiply this by 2, this by 3, and subtract them. So it's a very similar here. Um, so I'm going to write out my first row, the 2, 1, negative 1, 1. And so I'm going to work on this 3 here, changing it to a 0. And so again, I could multiply this whole row by 2 and this whole row by 3 and subtract them. And that's what this instruction says here. I'm going to take the row 2 numbers and multiply them by 2. So that's going to get multiplied by 2 and then actually all the other numbers in row 2. And I multiply the row 1 numbers by 3. And then I'm going to subtract them. Now, the, uh, the way the convention I use here is row 2 is what's going to be changed. Because this says twice row 2, subtract 3 times row 1. So I'm going to replace row 2 with those numbers. And now, one thing I like to do here is to actually write up the 2 times numbers and 3 times numbers in this case up here. So twice row 2, so all these numbers will be multiplied by 2. So 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8, 2 times 2 is 4, and 13 times 2 is 26. And then we're multiplying the row 1 numbers by 3. So 2 times 3 was 6, 1 times 3 is 3, negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, and 1 times 3 would be another 3 here. And so I'm going to replace this row with the difference between these. Now, this says the row 2 numbers minus the row 1 numbers. So 6 minus 6 will be a 0 here. 8 minus 3 will be a 5 here. 
4 take away negative 3 would be a 7, the same as 4 plus 3, and 26 minus 3 would be 23, so that's what's going to go here. So, those are the numbers. Now, next, I'm going to work on this 1 here. And I actually could use the 3 above in the second row, or the 2 above in the first row, it really wouldn't matter, I could use either to change that 1 into a 0. Now the nice thing about having a 1 is, like if this was elimination over here, I could just say, well, why don't I multiply this by 2, and that's already a 2x, and then I could subtract them and I would eliminate my x. So same idea here, I could take the row 3 numbers and multiply them by 2, and so that's what it looks like if the row 3 numbers multiplied by 2, and subtract the row 1 numbers from them. So 2 minus this 2 would be a 0 here. Negative 10 minus 1 would be a negative 11. Negative 4 take away 1, same as negative 4 plus 1, so that's a negative 3 here. And this 0 minus 1 would be a negative 1 below the, negative tw below the 23. And so that's my row three, new row 3 now. Now I've got two of my three zeros. So I'm going to leave the first row and the second row alone, and I'm going to change where this negative 11 is to 0. Now, <coughs> excuse me, if you're tempted to say, why don't we multiply this first row by 11 and add it to this, and that would become 0. I'm not arguing that it wouldn't. Okay? There's a problem with that. Uh, if you multiply the first row by 11 and add it to the third row, this, that would be a 22 and then you'd be adding it to the 0, and then that's no longer a 0, and you would have wasted the last row operation we did. So there is, a, there is kind of a restriction here for the last 0. You need to use the second and third rows to get the 0 here. You can't use the first row, because you'll ruin this number. It won't be a 0 anymore. Okay? So the least common multiple of 11 and 5 is 55. So what you could do is you could go 5 times row 3, and then 11 times row 2, and then these are negative 55 and positive 55, and then they add to add to 0. That's why I've got an addition sign here, <laughs> because they'll be, <coughs> they'll be opposites, excuse me. So 5 times row 3, multiplying each of these by 5, and then 11 times row 2, 5 times 11 is 55, 5 times, sorry, uh, 11 times uh, 7 is 77, and 23 times 11 is 253, and so I'm going to add them. So 0 added to this 0 is 0. 55 added to negative 55 would be a 0 here. Uh, 77 added to negative 15, same as 77 minus 15, so that would be, I guess, 62 here. And 253 added to uh, negative 5, or 253 minus 5 would be a 248 here. So that's my third row. Now, if you write out the equation that this third row represents, it would, because x's coefficient is 0 and y's coefficient is 0, you just get 62z equals 248. So the nice thing about having this triangle of zeros, and that's y, is I can now solve for z. Because that equation, 62z equals 248, all I have to do is divide out the 62, and I get z. Z's 4. Now, once you get z is 4, you go to the next row, which would just be, now x is 0, just 5y plus 7z equals 23, and we can this is called back substitution. We can substitute that 4 back into the equation, so 7 times 4 is 28, and solve for y now. So if we take 28 away from 23, we get negative 5 on the right, and then divide it to 5. So y is negative 1. Now if we can go and use either of these, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use the top one, the first one, just because it's in the top of this matrix. It doesn't really matter. And substitute those numbers back in. So negative 1 here, 4 here, and I can solve for x. So that would be negative 5. So when we bring that over, it would be adding 5 to 1. So we get 2x equals 6. Divide it to 2, and x is 3. So the solution would be uh, x is 3, y is negative 1, is 4, and, and z is 4. If you're studying um, equations of planes, if these represent equations of planes, then uh, they intersect in a unique point, 3, negative 1, 4. Okay, one more example, similar to the last one, but this has a little bit of a different outcome. So we write out the um, matrix, the augmented matrix of coefficients, 1, 1, 2, negative 2, etc. Uh, notice there's no z here in the third one, so that we would put a 0 here, where the z column is. Now, again, I want to try to get my triangle of zeros, so I'm going to work on this 3 first. So I could take that second row and subtract 3 times the first row. 3 minus 3 would be a 0. So we put the first row down. And so we're, gonna, we're multiplying the row 1 numbers by 3. So 
3, 3, 2 times 3 is 6, negative 2 times 3 would be negative 6. So 3 minus 3 would be a 0 here. Negative 1 minus 3 would be a negative 4. 14 minus 6 would be an 8 here. And 6 take away negative 6 is the same as 6 plus 6, so that would be a 12 there. Now, next thing I'm going to do is change that to a 0. And the nice thing about having a 1 here and a 1 here is I can actually just take the row 3 numbers and subtract the row 1 numbers from them. Now, if you wanted to go 3 times this minus row 2, that would work as well. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But with the 1s here, that's the simplest row operation. So 1 minus 1 would be a 0. 2 minus 1 would be 1. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And negative 5 take away negative 2 is the same as negative 5 plus 2, so it's negative 3. Now, so I want to now I want to get a zero here. Uh, if you once you get better row operations, you actually could do the zero here, and that would work. So I'm not going to bother writing my row two uh, down. I'll explain why in a moment. Now again, you have to use the second row and third row to get that zero in the third row right there. So we could multiply the row three numbers by four, and so we're adding negative four to four. That will be a zero then. So 0 add to 0 is, of course, 0. Negative 4 add to 4 is 0. 8 add to negative 8 is another 0. We've got lots of zeros here. And uh, 12 add to negative 12 is another 0. So we actually get a whole row of zeros here, and that has a meaning. The reason I didn't wrote, write my second row down is notice that all those are divisible by negative 4. And so we can make this just a little bit simpler if we do this row operation and divide those all by negative 4. So that row would be turned to 0, 1, negative 2, negative 3. Now, the whole row of zeros implies that there's actually an infinite solution to this. Uh, there's not a unique solution like there was in the first example. Okay? If you're studying equations of planes, these are three planes, and they intersect in a line of intersections. So a line is an infinite collection of points. So what we're going to find here is the equation for that line of intersection. Now, <coughs> excuse me, you let one of the variables, uh, x, y, or z, be the parameter t. Often the most convenient one to use is uh, the z, uh, but it doesn't always have to be. So if I write out the equation from the second row here, which would be 1y minus 2z equals negative 3, and put t in place of z here, uh, that would be negative 2t when we bring it over to the right side, it would be a plus 2t. So solving this for y, we get y equals negative 3 plus 2t. And so that's actually the parametric equation for this line of intersection if you're studying uh, equations of planes. Now, I, I need the parametric equation for x. And so uh, what you can do is take any of these, it doesn't really matter which ones, and uh, I'm going to use the first one here, and I'm going to put negative 3 plus 2t in place of y here, and t in place of z. And so it looks like that. And then solve for x. Now, 2t and 2t is 4t. And so when we bring that over to the uh, right side or subtract 4t from both sides, we get a negative 4t on the right. And um, adding 3 to both sides or bringing this over would be adding 3 to negative 2 would be a 1. So x is 1 minus 4t. So the solution is infinite of the form x is 1 minus 4t, y is negative 3 plus 2t, and z is t. Now, so if you're studying planes, this is actually the uh, parametric equations for the line of intersection of these two, three planes, sorry. Um, if you're not studying equations of uh, planes, um, this actually gives you points that are on um, all three of these equations. So for example, if you put a number in place of t here, for example, 0. If you put 0 in place of t, you would get x is 1, y is negative 3, and z would be 0. And that would be a solution for this. If you put any number in place of t, it generates a, a set of x, y, and z values that satisfy all of these equations. And again, if you're talking about planes, then that putting that number in place of t, it generates a point that is on this line of intersection that's, of course, also on the planes. Okay, last example, uh, number three here. Uh, we have uh, a system in, we've done some row operations, and it's been reduced to this matrix. So what does this matrix represent? Well, uh, there's something special about this. Um, because there's all zeros here, the first um, row would just correspond to x, and we wouldn't bother to say plus 0y plus 0z. It would just be x equals negative 2. The next one, since there's a 0 here and a 0 here, this is y, so that's 1y equals 5, so y would be 5. And there's a 0 here and a 0 here, so no x's or y's, just z equals 6. 
And that matrix is said to be in reduced row echelon form. Reduced row echelon form means that all the numbers on, and this is called the main diagonal, are all ones. And every other number in rows above or below them are zeros. So there's only zeros below that one. There's a zero above this one and a zero below. And of course, that's in the last row. So there's only rows above it, and they're all zeros. And so the neat thing about this, if it's in reduced row echelon form, is those are your solutions right there. The only drag to reduce row echelon form is there's a lot of row operations to take a system and put it in this form. But if you have it in this form, then the solution is very, <laughs> very easy to see. Okay, last one here. And this is a little bit similar to what was in the previous page. The last equation, remember that one had an entire row of zeros? This one has an entire row of zeros, except the last number is non-zero. The last equation would be 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 7. And there's a problem with that, because no matter what x, y, and z are, this side would have to work out to be 0, but 0 doesn't equal 7. So if you have an entire row of zeros, except the last number is not 0, it implies there's no solution to that system of equations. And so if they were equations of planes, and you're looking for where do they intersect, where are common points to all the planes, well, there wouldn't be any. Okay? They, would, uh, they would not coincide anywhere. So a row of zeros except the last number is non-zero implies there is no solution to the system at all. And that's the end of the video.